So, so what, what are some of the effects of, of this violence on a person's ability post? You know, there seems to be, is, is there a difference? Or what are the kinds of difference between assault, regular, old, ordinary, horrible assault, hit you on the head assault, and uh, sexual assault of sorts in terms of the victim's reaction, the victim's need for care, the, the uh, you know, the, you hear all the rape is a terrible thing. Why is it a terrible thing? I mean, I, I, I certainly feel that it's a terrible thing, but I'd like to delineate a little more for the audience. Why? Why? Is it, is it, does it have something to do with the long-term effects? I think even in the short term, sexual assault may be different from physical assault in the shame that it carries with it. And that shame actually has been documented to lead to the long-term effects of sexual abuse. People don't understand why 20 years later an individual may still be suffering the effects of something that happened to them sometimes as a child. And a lot of um, clinicians as well as researchers have looked at the impact from the standpoint of not only ongoing symptoms of something like post-traumatic stress that a lot of war veterans suffer, but many victims of rape suffer as well. But they also recognize that there's a certain shame that people carry with them that they cannot necessarily rid themselves of even many, many years after the assault. I think also when we're talking about children, it's important to remember they're still developing. So when something this intimate happens to them while they're developing their identities and their ideas about relationships and trust, it can really fracture attachments and it can really inform their sense of um, relationships with others and who they are, what, their sec what healthy sexuality should or shouldn't be, what um, relationships with adults or with older children should and shouldn't be. So I think there's also a lot um, sort of outside just what we think of as the clinical symptoms mm -hmm. of PTSD that can happen when you're still in this process of development. One of the things we were talking about before the camera's roll was, was that for many people, children and adults, the, the rapist, uh, aside from war issues, the rapist is often somebody they know very well. Yeah. Uh, so there's this, this profound betrayal that mm -hmm. uh, is added to this cup of shame and, and um, fear. And, and, and how do you deal with something like that? Very difficult. Um, I think, you know, one of the reasons why it's difficult to detect sexual abuse is because it is uh, perpetrated often by someone that other people trust as well, not only the, the child. Um, and it's hard to believe that someone who functions very well, for example, in the workplace would abuse a child. But that is the case. And in fact, the vast majority of children are sexually abused by someone they know and someone they trust. Why do people sexually abuse? Is there a link between having been sexually abused and sexually abusing later on in life? The majority of sexual abuse survivors do not go on to abuse other people in that way. However, it can be a red flag for a child, especially when they're doing something sexually inappropriate, that they themselves are touched inappropriately. So ideally, you can intervene early enough if you see a child acting in a way that's inappropriate and really help educate them about what is and is not appropriate and help them learn new ways of relating. If that does not get corrected, it could lead to bigger problems later on in terms of acting out sexually.